everyone. Welcome to the Katika Living Vibrantly show. We're so excited that you can join us this evening for a special show. I hope you've had a fabulous week. I know I've had a week full of blessings and joy. And that continues tonight right here live from the Tampa studios here at Talkwad. I want to tell you that this is a special show that we have in store just for you. We have our guest, Lori Spaulding. Hi, Lori. Hello. Thank you. Lori, we're so happy and honored to have Lori here. She is the new producer and host of her new show here at Talkwad Studios studios called Barking Out Loud show, right? Yeah. Great. And so we want to talk a little bit more about Lori, about what inspires her as she started this amazing organization called FAR, and that stands for Florida All Retrievers Rescue and Friends. It's a wonderful um, nonprofit organization that actually helps um, retrievers and dogs who have been abandoned, neglected, and she has a beautiful, loving a team of volunteers that come out and help her get these dogs and get them into a uh, wonderful home, loving home. They get them uh, well nutritioned and healthy and and, vi and vitality. So it's exciting to talk to Lori and find out more about her organization and most importantly how you can be part of that organization and help them through your time, through donations. And we're going to explore that all tonight. So go ahead and grab your warm water with lemon because we want to continue living vibrantly. And we're going to find out how Lori continues living vibrantly as she lives through her passion. So get nice and comfy. And here we go. Four, three. Welcome back, guys. We're so happy you can join us. We're here with Lori Spaulding, who's going to talk to us about her passion and her work with the Florida All Res Retrievers Rescue and Friends mission. So we're happy to have her. And guess what? We're going to have live guests. I heard we're having puppies come visit us. <laughs> so you can get face-to-face um, -face with these beautiful puppies who are ready to be adopted in a loving home. So... Stay tuned as we get that special knock on the door and you can see them for yourself. So, Lori, thanks for being here. Thank you for having me on. Uh, and everybody loves puppies. Yes, so. <laughs> yes. It's such an honor. You know, as we were talking last night and today during the show, I mean, right before the show, I mean, every every time I find out more about you, it's like you inspire me more. Um, oh, thank it's, you. it's amazing. <laughs> She's a single mom of a little boy. Yep. And she wore love seven-year-old and you work full-time and yet I you do. have time for this so tell us how where do you get yourself to 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 continue that that vigor inside of you that passion that you have with um with your organization okay it, it is uh it is like an additional full-time job basically um i'm sure my boss doesn't appreciate that sometimes it interrupts a bit <laughs> but uh, it's um it's, but when you it's bring the rewarding home. piece of it. It really is. So, you know, we take dogs out of Florida, Georgia, or Alabama, and we get the call that they're in a kill shelter, and it's they're looking for a rescue. And it could be, um, hey, these dogs only have till Thursday at 4 p.m. Can you commit to them? They're going to be put to sleep then if they're wow. not committed to by then. Um, it's really hard. Um, I must get 100 dogs a day on Facebook or email just sent 100? to me. Easily, easily, all over the shelters, all over, and they contact and your, me. your territory is Florida and part Florida, of Georgia. Yeah, we're based right here in Tampa Bay. Mm -hmm. We're kind of a small core group, but we have incredible volunteers. We have an organization called Pilots and Paws, 
Mm -hmm. And they wow. are pilots who volunteer their time and money and planes, and they actually go pick up the dogs from the shelters for really? us and bring them back. And wow. That's been going on for a couple of years. It has opened up like you wouldn't believe. Because before, and what we do otherwise, is we have ground transports. And these are people who are dedicated enough to get up at, say, 4 a.m., pack a bunch of dogs in their car, drive them for two hours, hand them off to another person. They drive them for another hour or two, drive them off to another... You know, it just keeps going wow. and going and going because you can imagine coming down from northern Alabama, whatever it may be, it, it's a long drive and you Absolutely. have to stop and let them out and make sure they have water and everything's okay. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it's, uh, it takes a lot of people. We always say it kind of takes a village Yes, <laughs> sometimes to save a litter of puppies or a mom or, um, you know, a couple of adults, whatever it may be. And we do not, uh, we do not discriminate. So... We take moms and puppies, we take adults, we take seniors, we take sick, we take That's whatever wonderful. it may be, um, as long as it's friendly. That's our right. biggest thing. Everybody's got to be evaluated to make sure they're friendly with people and other animals. Mm -hmm. So Okay, so dogs. bring us back to the beginning. What inspired you to take action and to create this nonprofit organization? Um, I, you know, it's funny. My beginnings are similar to a lot of people in rescue, I've mm -hmm. noticed, is I wasn't allowed to have a dog when mm -hmm. I was a kid. Mm -hmm. We lived in the city, and... Um, I, I'm finding a theme here with some of my other rescue friends where I guess we just kind of went hog wild when we were able to do it on our own. So um, I you had, had that a dog. special <laughs> love for animals. Yeah. Oh, yeah, all my, all my life. Mm -hmm. I took care of other people's dogs. Oh, so I, I would, you know, that. come home from school and like, can I go see Bernie today and oh. take care of him and train him and walk him and just spend wow, time with so him. Wow, so it's very natural for you, too. Very much so, mm -hmm. since I was really, really young, probably seven years old up in New Hampshire, wow. just you know, hanging out with my cousin's lab, trying to te teach her how to fetch or, or, you know, whatever it may be. Uh -huh. um, so it definitely came naturally. And when I was able to get my own, uh -huh. um, I rescued a puppy and mm. she was lonely. I was wor at work, so uh -huh. I wanted a buddy for her. So I started fostering and I got involved with a group up in Boston. And when I moved down here, it just made sense. I had right. to continue what I was doing. I loved it. I had foster dogs all the time. Um, they come in and they go out and it's these wonderful families. That's and, right. and that's the biggest thing. People say, oh, how do you let them go? Right. You know, and you get attached to some. I always say you get attached to the ones who need you the most. Aww. And the puppies aren't usually those because they kind of come in and they're all over the place and they don't right. really care whether it's you or me or someone right. else right. as right. long right. as they get it's attention. so crazy anyway, exactly. that age. I love that age. The adults are a little harder because they've, you know, maybe they're been settled. through something. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so they latch on to you or if they're sick, we get a lot of heartworm positive dogs. Um, that is huge down really? here. Yeah, big surprise to me. In Boston, in all the years I did rescue up there, mm -hmm. one heartworm positive dog. And it came in from Why Maryland. do you think the difference? Could be contributed um, I think a lot of it has to do with weather. Mm -hmm. So the mm -hmm. mosquitoes are here year-round. They don't go away, unfortunately. Right, right, right. Um, but a lot of it also has to do with education and economics, where people just don't buy heartworm medication mm -hmm. for their dogs. They don't give their dogs monthly prevention, which mm -hmm. is the simplest thing oh. in the world to, right. you know, not have one go through heartworm treatment or, God forbid, die from heartworm. It's so I think it's that. wonderful that you've taken the next step in this process and go, and you've decided to host your own show so that you can teach your viewers and then come on shows like ours and continue your mission on educating um, owners and mm -hmm. future pet owners on simple yep. things as, you know, the heartworm like we talked yeah. about. It's just knowing how easy it is, a monthly treatment. And talk to us a little bit about that. How easy is that? Um, it is super easy, and that's one. That is actually a major reason why I wanted to have a show. Is during rescue when I do adoptions, or I have people come to the house, or we're at events. I get questions constantly. Well, what if my puppy is not feeling well, or what if he has loose stool, or what if he's not eating, or what does he need for shots, and when mm -hmm. can I start heartworm medication or flea medication? Um, so all of those questions are constantly coming, or training questions. So over the years, it's just so much of it that I said, you know, there's so many people out there that have the best intentions in the world, but and they don't know. And they don't know. 
And then look at these cute little pictures that we have. So that we can have our viewers be a little enticed to the different pictures. Oh, that's Allie. Ah. <laughs> little sweet Allie. Yeah, sweet Allie. So don't continue your story. We have a couple pictures we want to put up. Okay, so, great. So, yeah, so they don't know. And so you take that time to spend with them. And then you realize probably that that was a, a great um, introduction for yourself to be comfortable mm -hmm. to go in front of the camera. And look at this other picture. Oh, <laughs> that's, that's one so of our cute. Pyrenees mixed puppies that just came in from Alabama. Oh, yeah. my goodness. <laughs> she's adorable. Everybody wants her, of course, because she's yeah. white and fluffy. <laughs> Yep. So, so okay, so tell us more. So you, that was the process that, that kind of got you started into. Yep, it is. And there's, there's a lot of things uh, that I feel I really can share with people from my experience over the last two decades or so, mm -hmm. aging myself three decades, whatever it may be. Right, right, right. Um, <laughs> it's just, you know, again, I think, I think people have the best intentions. A lot of people want a puppy. A lot of people want a dog. Or maybe they figure, oh, I have kids, so right. I need to start from a puppy. And that's not necessarily true. I advise that's against a, a puppy. Right. That, that's my <laughs> I conception. truly do. True. I'm like, so if you, tell us yeah. why. Why is that not true? Well, I, I always, you know, if you don't have the time for a puppy and the patience for a puppy, puppies are very high maintenance. There's a lot of training involved. There's a lot of training going on with potty, as I had yeah. talked about in my first show. It was one of my first training tips is how to potty train your dog. Uh -huh. That's always the first thing you run into. Right, right, right. Um, but there's so many. There's chewy. There's, you don't know what a puppy is going to turn out to be. So even if it's your purebred dog versus a mutt, you have no idea how big is that dog going to be, what's its personality going to be like, what is it going to get along with. Um, so if someone has young children, I actually advise them to go the opposite way and look at one of the calmer adults. I'm not saying mm -hmm. get a nine-year-old. You don't right. have to. Right. You can get a one or two or three-year-old dog who mm -hmm. has you know, gone through that puppy stage, has some training, and you know that it's good with kids. You know it's good with cats. You know it's Look, good with other dogs. Look, we have more dogs. puppies. There so, we go. <laughs> <laughs> Those are actually the babies of the dog that uh, was shown a little bit earlier, oh, Missy. Oh, really? Yep, they came in oh. from Levy County. They were one of our locals. And uh, they're five weeks old right now. Oh. So I actually so these saw them this morning. Most of them have not been adopted in these pictures? Yes. Yes. Okay. There's a couple here I noticed that have been adopted. Um, we had a big adoption event recently. This boy, Jax, actually just had a very expensive surgery. Oh, um, what he, happened? He um, was hit by a car. Oh. And no one did anything about it. Uh, he ended up in a Georgia shelter, one of our favorite shelters, Bainbridge, Georgia. Um, we love them. Yay take, for Bainbridge! They do. They take care of their dogs, and they Please. do anything they have Big to get them out to, them. to rescue. Thank yeah. you. Bainbridge Thank you. We are grateful Society. for you guys. Yep, they do. They do anything to get them Same. out to rescue. You know, That's some amazing. shelters are a little hard to work with. Beth is the manager over there. She will be, okay, Sunday I'll be at the airport to meet the pilot. You know, everything. Okay, do we need shots? Do we need wormer? Do we wow. need, hey, we'll give them a flea bath. You know, whatever I they can that. do to help us. They're See, so appreciative. Thank you, Beth. Yep. We love Wonderful you from the Katika <laughs> show here. We are so grateful because it takes people like Beth, like yourself, a team of loving people who are dedicated, who who can help these precious animals and then be that transition to that loving family. So I just love the organization. Yeah. I love how um, you're so passionate about it and that you can continue this process through the networks, through yeah. the web TV. And, um, you, you know, know what the best thing is? Tell us. I would say is um, having the families, the couples, whoever it may be, mm -hmm. send us pictures and post on our Facebook page. Oh, we love it. It's a, like you see the puppies. We've we had them since they were born or three or four or five right. years old. And then suddenly here they are at two years old and, and they're sending pictures with the kids. And, you know, it's just, it's so wonderful. Because then, we, you know what we do with those? We send them back to Beth at the shelter who did whatever she could to get them out to us. Kathy up there who arranges all the transport. Oh, that's wonderful. I mean, wonderful. the foster mom who is involved in saving its life and agreeing to take it uh -huh. and keeping it and nurturing it and feeding it and everything so it could have that adoptive family. That is the best thing. About See, I that's say beautiful. About and, and that's amazing that they... They, they share with you those times. That's, mm -hmm. that, that's the happy ending we want all of these beautiful yep. animals to have. As they're going out the door, I always say, keep in touch, send the pictures. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because you're part of the family. Yes, you exactly. Know? So that's beautiful because you get to see, yep. that's like that, um, you see that reward, you know, um, mm -hmm. that mutual energy exchange of love and compassion. and yep. Oh, just beautiful. Sure. Yeah, that's wonderful. Now, do you have any pets? I do. I Tell have, us about your uh, baby. <laughs> 
I have my two boys. I have big boys. My lab and my golden are obnoxiously oh. large for labs and goldens. They're oh. about 90 to 110 pounds. Wow. Yes. <laughs> they're big they're babies. They're big obnoxious dogs. Mm -hmm. um, and then I have a little girl who is one of my foster dogs. And I don't normally keep my fosters, oh. um, but she was feral. She was found in the woods, oh, and she no. was afraid of everybody. She wouldn't come near anyone. It took me almost a month or two to even mm -hmm. get her in the house. Once I got really? her home, she was in the backyard. To actually oh. get her to come in the house and then to come past the door, come past the couch. She'd have a little, I put a crate for her and that was mm -hmm. her little hideout. So getting her out of that. Um, my little seven-year-old actually was instrumental in that. He would go in and just kind of lay on her. Aww. Like, oh, Millie, it's okay. See, you know, it's so funny. Nurturing, giving, it, giving that, that safety yeah, reassurance exactly. to the, it to is. the puppy. It is. You don't have to be afraid of us. Right. You know, everything is normal. She loved the dogs. That was Aww. kind of her saving grace of see. she would take, uh, she would follow my yogi around and play with him Aww. and see that I played with him and he was comfortable around me. So that helped her transition to the point that I wasn't a scary person. Wow, that's beautiful. And uh, now she just, she's just amazing. amazing. I think yeah, people see her too. and they were like, that's Millie? You know, Aww. she jumps on my bed in the morning. She's so excited. Aww. And they were like, how is that Millie? She was like the scared dog in the corner who wouldn't see? move. You know? How beautiful that yeah, is. That's, that's got to awesome. be so rewarding yeah. for you to see that transformation. Yep. So those know. are my three babies. That's so. awesome. <laughs> um, and before the show, we were actually talking also about the um, various stories. You were telling me about how you get this phone call in the middle of the night and, and hear, and you, you hear about picking up these puppies alongside the road. or mm -hmm. Mm. Yeah, we definitely, those are our buddies usually in Alabama where it's a side of the road thing. We've had so many puppies recently that are either a box on the side of the road or are, um, these actually, we had these fluffy ones. They were like shepherd mm. husky mixes. They were oh, gorgeous. beautiful. And they were probably about maybe eight weeks old or so. And they found them just huddled in a corner oh. on the side of the road. And they were just all huddled together trying to keep warm because, you know, don't forget about a month ago, it was very chilly. Very chilly. You know, we mm -hmm. were having a lot of these cold spells. So we moved heaven and earth to get those puppies down as fast as we could. One of our volunteers drove up there. Wow, <laughs> she really? Was like, I don't have work today. So they had worked all night because <laughs> she's a bartender. She got in the car. She wow, drove all the way up. That's dedication. And there is a lovely man, Leonard. Um, uh -huh. He's 80, I think, six years old um, up there. And he's uh -huh. on his own. And his um, house actually burnt down this past year. Oh, my goodness. Um, he still helps us in any way he can. He said, I'll get in my van and I'll bring him down and I'll meet her. And they, they met up in, uh, I think it was Mariana, Florida. Wow. And uh, brought them back down. But, yeah, he And they do. Th these are volunteers that are using their own time on yep. gas. There's no everything. pay for anything. Everybody does their own. It's just completely out of your own heart. Now, we do support our volunteers. So if you do want to volunteer for us, in you know, the economy is hard. We understand that. We provide crates. We do all medical care, of course. Right. Um, we can provide the food. We've had people say that. It's like, oh, well, if I could take a litter of puppies, it's going to cost a lot of money in food and paper right. towels and cleaning. And so it, we'll take care of that. That cost is being yep. covered by the organization. Yep. So wow. sometimes we'll ask for donations. Some people mm -hmm. can't give monetary donations. Hey, you've got a pack of paper towels at home or you've got some sheets and blankets you don't use anymore or cleaning supplies or whatever it may be. You've had a puppy. You have a crate. You don't use it anymore. We go through crates like you and Millie. Really? So all wonderful. that stuff is really valuable to shelters as well as rescues. See, that's a great suggestion for our viewers. Mm -hmm. You see how just by donating, like she said, paper towel, something so small like that, yeah, you, you are making such a difference. You know? And that's the whole concept of today's show is how we can all make a difference and, and help you uh, continue your mission with this organization. And tell us, how, how long have you been working with... Um, well, you were one of the founders. Yes. So tell so us when we did you... started FAR back in 2004. 2004. Actually. Wow. Yep. And you've, do you know exactly how many puppies, dogs you've rescued? I don't. I do know the last two years because we've been keeping a spreadsheet for about three or four years now. We uh -huh. weren't doing that before. Um, and the last two years in a row, we've had almost exactly 500 dogs each year. Yeah. So, so, so sorry, excuse me. Uh, we can actually hear the whole crew speaking through the whole show. <laughs> Just want to make sure our crew knows that. I can <laughs> totally hear them live on the air as well. <laughs> I'm sure Enjoying our viewers it. can do that. Um, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt no, you. No, so that's okay. Me. That's okay. So, um, yeah, so, I mean, we've, we've been around since 2004. I've been doing rescue for about 15, 16 years. 
Um, wow. But uh, yeah, FAR has been around that long. 2004, um, that's wonderful. Yeah, I'm, I'm very thankful and proud that we're pretty well known in the community mm -hmm. among the rescue and shelters uh, in the, these these tri-state areas, I say tri-state, it's usually up north, but these tri-state areas. Right, right, um, right. And, uh, and if people want to get a hold of you, you have a Facebook page. Talk to we us do. about We do. We have a Facebook page. Mm -hmm. is Florida All Retriever Rescue, FAR, F-A-R-R -R is the acronym. Um, we also have um, an email that people can send to. We're on PetFinder.com and Adopt a Pet as well. PetFinder is a wonderful resource for people looking for any breed and any rescue or any animal. You can find horses right. and cats and guinea pigs and everything else. Um, See, that's great to know. Yeah, I didn't so know that. So our email for adoption is adoptfromfar at yahoo.com. Uh, if you'd like to foster, which uh -huh. we would love, <laughs> right, right, right. Uh, or volunteer in any way, it's foster and then the number four, fosterforfar at yahoo.com. And, and we also have that on the Katika fan page. Fan Facebook fan page, so they can also go there, yep. and we have all of the emails there. <gasps> I think we have a guest! <laughs> you think there's somebody here to see us? <gasps> I hope so. Let's I hope they're see. cute and furry. I think they're, yes, I hope so too. Let's see who's come in. The Hi! Hello! Oh my goodness! <laughs> Who is this? Oh my goodness! Whoops. Thank you so much! I'll be out here. Okay, okay thank wow. you very much. How are you? I'm going to switch to the black one is Blazer. Okay, who am I the holding? Blazer has a little car sick. Like so okay. Oh, okay. I had eaten right before I left. Oh, so. I'm this sorry. Is oh, my box. gosh. So here Come we on. have. This is Blazer. So thank you and so much. We're getting Hi. caught in our. Uh, my hi, Blaze. Oh, here. yeah, we're getting caught all right. Of course. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Of course. They so were hi. Please. Oh, my goodness. They're so cute. Are we getting them on camera? Look at this. They're so adorable. Come here, sweetheart. <laughs> now, who's this? That Ooh. one is Bluto. <laughs> hi, Bluto. What How we try and do with a lot of our litters, if you? they don't come in with names, uh -huh. we give them like a letter Aww. and then try and come up with as many names as oh we have to with that goodness. letter. So we know people are interested in the B letter or the right. R letter. Right, right. Litter. So we yeah. know who they're looking for. Oh, so. so tell us about these puppies. So these guys came from Georgia. Uh huh. They came from a shelter up there. They came from Vidalia, Georgia. Vidalia, Georgia. Look! They came down, and these are very special puppies. So these guys came down, and within about seven days, oh, they got very, very sick. Oh, no. So one thing you never want to see in rescue is parvo. Parvo virus parvo, is yes. incredibly deadly. Mm -hmm. And these little guys are parvo survivors. So oh, they've my been goodness. through an awful lot. Oh, and they survived. Weeks. Here, buddy. Come they here. did. All four survived, oh, oh, which is goodness. wonderful. That's not oh always the case. <laughs> you so just wanted to lick me. Oh, we my goodness. We had them hospitalized in ICU for oh three days. Oh, my gosh. Really? With overnight care and IV fluids. And, and here, when they, yep. once they got here from yep. Georgia. Yep, uh -huh. from, uh, they were up at uh, East West Animal oh Hospital. It's one of our vets in Lutz. Oh, and we so cool. bring all our Parvo dogs to them if humanly possible, because Dr. Register up there is just amazing. Look how beautiful you are. <laughs> oh, he's just <laughs> loving the camera. You're a natural born star. <laughs> that little blazer here. And I love blazer, blazer too. has got that little unique nose on him. It's really oh, funny. He's so got this cute. little half, half, half he white does. and pink and half black nose. Look at the camera. It's over so there. these puppies are it's available for there. adoption, right? <laughs> yes, they are. Okay, see? So we can get in contact the viewers. Yep. I know your hearts are melting right now and you can <laughs> contact You're Lori. Generous. You can't stop yeah. <laughs> That's right. We're having all this wonderful joy <laughs> and this free love because that's what <laughs> puppies and dogs do is they give you this unconditional love and this healing um, condition that we all need. Definitely. You know, I think Takes everyone, away the stressors of the day. I'll that's tell you, sure. I, I, I would recommend this for every employer to have a little puppy at their workplace. That would actually <laughs> be a good thing, you know, that's on take your dog to work day. Absolutely. I bring mine in and people are like, can you do that every you day? Day, see? They're so happy to it's, have them there. Of course, and it's, it just changes the environment, changes your energy, and it helps you to continue living vibrantly. That's one of our mind, body, spirit, uh, mind, body and spirit type of uh, philosophy here on our show. So we're excited that we're able to share all this with you. And here we're playing with our puppies and having <laughs> fun. And we um, we'll definitely want to go ahead and put up um, any other pictures that we may have. I know we have some other um, potential um, puppies and dogs that are available for adoption. And we'll have our crew put those pictures up now. Okay. 
Okay. Now, who's this? This is Samson. He's actually blind. He's oh. a purebred two-year-old black lab. He loves everybody. He does. He actually was the babysitter for those fluffy husky puppies oh, when they came when in. They came we have pictures oh. of him in the yard with all of them surrounding him. Oh. He probably thought we were crazy, but... He is blind, he is blind. Um, but he doesn't care. And now who's this? This is uh, Jasmine. She's uh -huh. one of our Great Pyrenees Mountain Dogs who actually her foster mom is not letting her go. <gasps> so, really? Yes. Yeah. So she's uh, going to be one of our board members dogs. Actually. Oh my goodness. So. That Was that the one that was here last week? No. Oh, okay, that, that is a Great Pyrenees. Yeah, 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 that's what I thought. This is Jasper. I Jasper. If you can see by the upper left picture, he oh, was my in goodness. very bad shape. Incredibly emaciated. He needed to be on IV fluids when he was found. He oh. had no nutrition whatsoever. Where was he found? He was found in Alabama. He's actually from Jasper, Alabama. That's, Jasper, That's why we call him that. Jasper, yep. okay. Loaded with worms, petrified oh. of everything. And you can see on the bottom right picture, that's actually a picture so from our adoption event this weekend. Really? He's gained a couple, 20 plus pounds. He's happy. He loves playing with other dogs. Oh he is gosh. so sweet. The funny thing you can't tell, he has this little nub tail. Oh. It's his little tiny tail. <laughs> so we don't know if he's maybe yellow lab and some pointer in there that he's got right. that little nub Dang, tail. Right, right. And you see a lot of that coming out of Alabama. But oh my oh, God, he's how such precious, a sweetheart. But you see the difference? That's just amazing. Oh, yeah. What a blessing. Yep. And how... I mean, when did you take the original that picture? Was, I think it said February 6th to March, March 15th. Wow, that's amazing yep. in that time. So just over a month. Yeah, and it takes a little bit of time for their system to get used to it. Cause but I think it's amazing. Just throw it right into No, them, yeah. but look at the transition, how going? healthy. You got to play with your brother. So you how about any things? upcoming events? That um, we can let's see. promote to our um, viewers. This is kind of high season Ooh. for a lot of our adoption events. Uh -huh. We just had the big um, Suncoast event that was this past weekend. Uh -huh. We're we'll going to be doing adoption events up at PetSmart in um, New Tampa. It's right okay, there New off Tampa. of Ruthie Downs. Okay. Um, so we're going to be up there with Pet Pals, who's a shelter oh. over in uh, St. Pete. They mm -hmm. go up there with their dogs. They also pull from the same area as we do. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So we'll be up oh. there with our friends, and uh, I uh, we're trying to set up a schedule, and, and uh, so that way people are expecting us right. at certain times. So that's something we can um, look at your Facebook yes, page? Yes, our Facebook page will definitely let you know of any adoption events coming up and any ways to help. Sometimes I'll post in there we have... 20 puppies arriving this well, weekend. Oh, you that's, know. oh my gosh. We need help. <laughs> I love it. And what I would like to ask you, if it's okay, I would love for you to tag the Katika Show because we would love to promote those events that would through be our wonderful. Facebook yep. page. No, we so love our to. viewers can be, um, uh, it doesn't matter where you're watching this from because we know we have fans from all over the world. And you know what? This, these, sh these puppies could be shipped anywhere. Right. Yeah, we do. We get uh, a lot of times, you know, one of our biggest issues is when you find them in Alabama right. and they have nowhere to go before transport. Right. right we need right. fosters up there. We right. need people up there to hold on to them. Same to that. So that would be great. Definitely not just a Florida thing. No, it's just sure. not a Florida thing. That's now, right. Now, if you want to adopt from me, you got to get down here, though. Why yeah. Don't ship out. <laughs> you got to fly in or drive in. But it'd be Florida. worth the drive or the fly in. Okay. I have had that happen. That's I, did. Like, yep. I would love that to happen yep. again. So, anyway, Lori, it's been wonderful to have you here on the show. He, he is tired. He wants to He's walk. He's like, that's my brother. Oh, I want to go play. I want to go play. <laughs> I have enjoyed every minute. Oh, my goodness. And he's going to get down. So, yeah. I am go. going to say thank you. And, oh, he, he wants there to go with you. Hello, Bluto. <laughs> and we want to say thank you to oh, Lori for being on the show and the Katika Living Vibrantly. And thank you guys for being part of our audience tonight and sharing in this wonderful show. And please... Um, go ahead and contact Lori through her Facebook page, through her um, email, and see how you can make a difference um, in these lives of these puppies, of these dogs. If you can't adopt, there's so many other ways you can do it. But if you know about anyone that wants to adopt, be sure to contact Lori Spaulding and be the difference that these dogs need in their lives right now. So we thank you. We hope you have a wonderful, blessed week. Bye. See you soon. Some tea? <laughs>